If there's one thing that we do every single week that can feel like a bit of a time drag, it's certainly meetings. And whilst today I can't show you an AI tool to replace you in your meetings, what I can show you is ways that are able to help you with saving time, writing up minutes, actions and notes that happen from within your own meeting. Not only that, there are better ways to consider creating content inside of your meeting without needing to rewrite it all up again. And to do that, well, we're going to be looking at Microsoft Loop and its capabilities to keep everyone literally on the same page by creating content using collaborative meeting notes, but also going a step further and showing how we can use Loop to create content inside of a meeting and share it with others in Teams, OneNote and even Outlook. Not only that, there are new features in whiteboards inside of Teams that allow us to create loop content. We're gonna check that out to see how we can take a collaborative idea and make it into something much more formal that we can use straight after the meeting. So before we dive into loop, I'd love it. Hit that like button to let me know that this content has helped you. Not only that, hit that subscribe button to find more great content like this to use the tools that you already have in much better ways. Otherwise, let's dive into Loop and check out how we can make it much easier when it comes to managing your meetings. So firstly, let's consider collaborative notes because in your meetings, you're going to want to take points on your agenda, meeting notes and also actions. And you don't want to reinvent that every time in your meeting by creating them after the event and then resharing them in other apps. And within Microsoft Loop, we can use collaborative notes, which is also built into Microsoft Teams and it's pretty easy to go ahead and get this set up. Inside the Microsoft Teams, you can go into your calendar and you can schedule a new meeting by selecting new meeting in the top right. You can go ahead and add your subject and also your meeting description. But as you'll see at the bottom, there's an option to add an agenda. By left clicking into this option, you'll see it generates a part of a loop component. You'll see agenda, meeting notes and follow up tasks. This now is a collaborative loop component. We can also optionally begin filling in the agenda and adding more information in readiness for our meeting. With that done, we can also decide to hide these meeting notes on the invitation so people can't see it when you go and send out the meeting. And that can be done very easily by clicking on this icon to the top right. You'll then see they cannot see those meeting notes, but of course it does help. So by left clicking, you can also make it available once the invitation is sent out, allowing other people in the meeting to go and change those and add other points to the agenda. Let's go ahead and click on send and send this meeting invitation out to Megan, who's going to be joining our meeting. And with that now scheduled by clicking into our meeting, as you'll see at the bottom, we'll see both a link to the meeting itself and also our meeting notes with those agenda points added that can be also updated, as I mentioned, in readiness for our meeting. But let's go ahead and open this meeting inside of Microsoft Teams by very quickly clicking join in the top right and go ahead and join the meeting. And as you can see in here now on the right hand side, the meeting note tabs are automatically displayed. And that will also include those points in the agenda and the ability to capture more information during the meeting, such as meeting notes and more. So as we begin to check off the agenda points, we can actually do so live through the meeting notes tab and then also add our meeting notes and follow up actions. And that's exactly what we've done here. We begin adding our meeting notes and also add an action for Megan to pick up on, which is also synchronized into Megan's to-do list using Microsoft Planner and Microsoft To-Do. But in addition, we can very easily add a task to myself. Go ahead and select add task and then we can give it a name. And by adding a name and an assignee and a date, that's now also been set in our to-do list. And that will also synchronize across to Microsoft To Do, just like it will for Megan as well. So that's a great way to be able to capture your notes, minutes, and also action points. But what happens if the meeting then ends? Well, let's go ahead and end this meeting. And once that meeting's finished, do you need then to go and re-complete these minutes, actions, and so forth? And the answer is no. Here is a meeting invitation inside of the meeting itself that we just joined. You can see it includes the agenda points you've checked off, the meeting notes and follow up tasks. We can also really easily check those off directly in this meeting invitation, 
which is synchronized into Microsoft To Do and Planner. So this gives you a way to take that content and capture it really easily. But what happens if you've generated a meeting using Outlook? Well, you won't have that option, but you can turn on meeting notes during the meeting itself. Let's go ahead and join a meeting that I've scheduled using Outlook and I'll show you how to turn that on. And here we are inside the Microsoft Teams, but meeting notes were not turned on from my Outlook invitation. But all we now need to do is go to the top and we can select the notes tab from the ribbon bar inside of your Teams meeting. As if by magic, we now have a generated loop meeting notes panel, which works exactly the same and captures your agenda points, minutes and actions and stores them in Microsoft Loop. So even though you haven't turned it on your invitation, you can turn on notes directly within Teams and get your Loop capabilities all set up. So before we get looped out, I'd love it if I could tell you a little bit more about what we do and how we can help you. Because here at Your 365 Coach, our vision was to help you on your journey in Microsoft 365. And this tutorial is just one of many that we aim to do that in. But we go beyond these free tutorials. You can check out on-demand masterclasses on our website below and even drop us a note to see how we can help you with coaching and consulting opportunities to help you, your team, or your business succeed in Microsoft 365. And otherwise, if you need to get started and want to find out more, you can even download our free Microsoft 365 ebook from our website. Anyway, let's dive back into Loop and find out more great ways to improve your next meeting. So how can we share our meeting notes and minutes with also other people that weren't in our meeting? Well, they can easily access it if they were invited via the meeting recap itself. They can go ahead and open up the calendar invitation, scroll down and find our meeting notes. But equally, you might want to store it elsewhere for easy access, such as in OneNote or even one of your Microsoft Teams channels. And we can do that because Microsoft Loop has this stored as a component allowing it to be also copied and synchronized in another app. All we then need to do is go to the top of our loop component and select the copy component button to go ahead and copy it. We can then go into one of the apps of our choice. Let's head into one of our team's channels, which relates to this project itself. What I'd now like to do is start a new post with the team. And I can very easily paste it directly into our post. I can also add a subject and so forth and go ahead and post this into our Microsoft team. That now means that that content can be shared with the wider team. We can even check off the agenda points directly from the team's channel, but our meeting notes can be shared with colleagues easily. Alongside that, what about OneNote? Well, here we are inside of OneNote on the web because Loop is also going to be supported in OneNote. We can see meeting notes I've taken before from one of our meetings stored in my OneNote page, but I can scroll down and once again, paste in that loop component and it can be stored on my OneNote page I can refer to later and keep a copy of all of our meeting notes and actions in one single place. So if I want to share it in Teams, in Channels and Chat, or in Outlook, or even OneNote, there are multiple ways that we can take our meeting actions and notes and share them with others. But we don't always want to take notes inside of our meeting. We may want to create content to be shared with others and keep it all in sync once again to share it elsewhere. And can we do that inside of our Microsoft Teams meeting? And of course we can. We can go ahead and open up the meeting chat inside of one of our Teams meetings. And at the bottom, we'll see a loop icon. By selecting this icon here, we'll now be able to create a particular type of loop component. We can see many options available. This can work really well for a table of data or maybe some paragraph copy that you need to also work with your colleagues on and keep in sync, because there's nothing worse than messages going backwards and forwards just with revisions in that content. So let's go ahead and add in one of our paragraphs here. Once we've done that here now, we can see we can add a title and add a paragraph to begin creating our loop content. With our content now added inside of our loop component, it's very easy to go ahead and click on send and share it inside of that meeting chat. Now immediately we'll see here, there's a link to open the content inside of loop. But by left clicking into it, we can actually see we can make changes live inside of that component and even select additional components to actually be created inside of that as well. Meaning you'll be able to now share that content with your colleagues really easily and also create content that's kept in sync within the meeting and without. And the benefit is once again, 
we can go into our content and we can also share it elsewhere. Here, click in the free dot menu and selecting copy component, I could take this into another one of my apps, such as Microsoft Outlook, once again Teams channels, and also into other apps supporting Loop. And what about whiteboards? We now need to collaborate more effectively in meetings with throwing ideas onto our canvas. But we also need to take that and move it into much more of a structure. So let's go ahead in our meeting and create ourselves a whiteboard by clicking share and then selecting Microsoft whiteboard. We'll now see that a new whiteboard has been generated for us. What we can also is take one of our templates available in the whiteboard experience. But here I've selected an affinity diagram. Lots of post-it notes and ideas can be thrown into here as we work together in our team. But the problem is whiteboards are great, but usually they'll also come with tasks or other points, such as voting tables and more. But the great news is we can insert loop components into our whiteboard to provide that capability. So by clicking the freed up menu, we can now select from loop components and choose an available component to suit your needs in the whiteboard. Let's go ahead and select the voting table and put it onto our digital canvas inside of our whiteboard. And now we have our voting table. I very simply added a few ideas and pros and cons. But as we can see, we can also vote for these ideas directly on our whiteboard experience. And we're not limited to just voting tables. As I mentioned, we can add other components into here, such as the ability to have checklists, progress trackers and more, allowing us then to take this content from our whiteboard copy it, and once again, we can go back into our Microsoft team and take that content that we created on our whiteboard and post it straight into our Teams channel. That we can now share it with colleagues and understand where the best ideas were from our whiteboard and experience. So taking our loot components, taking into other apps from within a whiteboard can mean we don't have to re-input and recreate that information and we can all share it in place and keep it in sync with Loop. So we've just checked out multiple ways to help you in your next Teams meeting. Whether that comes from the collaborative notes experience, the ability to create content inside of your meeting and share it elsewhere, and even those whiteboard capabilities. There's a huge range of different options you can use today to improve your next Teams meeting and ultimately save time with recreating the same material again and again. And that's the point. Using these tools, I do believe can save you hours every single week. And even better, well, they're pretty much available inside of the Microsoft 365 license for no additional cost. So there's no credit card details needed to get access to these tools. So I'd love for you to get started and see how much time you can save. And of course, let me know in the comments if you find this helpful and what you do to save time in your meetings when it comes to using 365 that you'd love to share with others. And of course, if this video has helped, hit that like button to let me know. It always helps with making our videos perform better. And of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to find more great content like this to help you become more productive and use the tools you already have in much better ways. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.